video just to help you get started with uh, RC Crew Chief because uh, it's unlikely that the models that you want are going to be in the program when you download and install it. So there's two ways that you can uh, get models into or create models in RC Crew Chief. Uh, we'll start with a simple one first. So just open the car manager and what we're going to do is we're going to import a car file. So before we import a file, first thing we need to do is go to the RC Crew Chief website, go to the download page, go to on road cars, and let's just download one of these files. So let's say uh let's say the TC six point two. So what we'll do is we'll right click on this and click save target as and it's going to go into the downloads which is fine so we'll just save that there. Okay so that's it we just downloaded our model. Uh, the other thing I would mention is uh, there's two things here there's a chassis file and a car file. So more advanced users may just want to download the chassis file and not build their own car files uh, but if you're just getting started this is the way to go just download the car file okay so we can close that out now we're done there so now we're going to import that file that we just downloaded so there it is it's in our main, my downloads folder car AE 6.2 so just select that and let's open it probably going to get some duplication errors so yes you see here it's coming it says there's already a file with that name so what it's done rather than just have two files with the same name it's appended a one to it and it'll probably do the same thing for the chassis as well yeah exactly so there's the chassis it's the same thing as well so just click OK it's not a big deal it's just doing uh, its job and preventing you from having uh, duplicate models uh, with the same name okay so we're successfully imported and that's it that's how simple it is to load a model in from uh, the website. Once you're, the only other thing that you would want to do before before closing this out would be if you're planning on, <coughs> excuse me, doing any uh, simulation acceleration versus time to look at different motors and gearing and so on, uh, then you need to input uh, numbers for this. And there's a nifty little calculator here that'll help you get some numbers in the uh, in the right ballpark. Uh, so at the top here we have a variety of body styles from truggies to touring cars. Uh, so you just click on one of these and typical numbers for uh, that body style are provided for you. You can select low, medium, high drag uh, or you can enter in whatever value you want here. You're not limited to, uh, to what is provided. You can change it to be whatever you want. So this is not a uh, 1 8 on-road car, this is a 190 Touring, so we'll use that and then we'll just copy those values to the car. So there they are, the values have been copied through into the car. So that's it. Just click uh, Save here and that's it. If we close this out, that model will be selected for you. So there it is right there. And all the, uh, you know, the chassis, the the battery, the, the ESC, and the uh, motor are all selected. Uh, the one thing I should point out is when you do import things, the motor, battery, and ES, ESC are just set to default values. Uh, if you want to use something different, then just pick it from your lists here. Battery, if you need to create a battery model, then use the battery manager. It's fairly straightforward. And similarly, the ESC is fairly straightforward as well. Okay, so that's a quickie on how to import a file. So the other way to do this would be to build a new car. So to build a new car, we just click here, and it asks us to enter a new car name. So we're going to call this uh, example. And we will use, uh, let's use Yokomo BD7 and 10.5. Uh, and we'll leave that as it is and we use a pro ESC. So once we've done that, and then we can click save. And now we have a model that we just created by selecting a chassis, a motor, a battery, and an ESC. And again, if you're 
needed to, you could go in and change your, your arrow and mechanical constants. Now, one other thing that's, that's important when you're creating your own models is the mass properties. So, uh, you want to make sure your total mass is, uh, is accurate, uh, as accurate as you can get it. Uh, your front and rear unsprung masses, a lot of the models will have those <coughs> numbers already measured, but sometimes they are approximated as well. Uh, the best way to uh, do this, you can see here, there's a little pop-up that tells you how to uh, go through and measure uh, the uh, unsprung mass. Uh, the CG, there's a calculator built in, so if you have four-wheel scales, drop your car in the four-wheel scales, enter in the readings from each corner of the car, and that will locate the center of gravity relative to the front and rear axle lines and the center line of the chassis. Uh, to determine the height of the uh, center of gravity, you need to do a little more work in that you need to raise the rear of the car up and knowing the height. Uh, and uh, once you've done that, then you enter in the total weight on the front wheels that are sitting on the front axles with the rear of the car raised up in the air. Uh, once you've done that, then you can click Calculate, and it'll all funnel through. So let's just do a, an example here. 40, 65, let's say. So you can see there it's calculated what our cross weights are, what our front uh, weight percentage, our rear weight percentage. Um, our wheelbase, we'll just leave that the same. Same with our, our uh, track. So our height, we're going to do 104 millimeters. That's what my little stand works on. And let's say that we've got uh, 680 grams on the front axle. So we click calculate, and there you go. It's calculated the location of the uh, uh, center of gravity relative to the center line or the midpoint between the front and rear axles. So it's negative 2.3. So it's 2.3 millimeters behind that center line. And the y direction is laterally, and it's 0.8 millimeters, and the height is 27 millimeters above ground. So if we just click copy those values to the car and close, they've all been copied over, and then just click save again. And we're done.